No doubt who will be the talk of the town at the Oval come Thursday for the last time. And talking of talk, they're always talking about him just about everywhere. Joining the fielder of all fielders today is the wicketkeeper of all wicketkeepers. Now, for a good part of the last test in Yorkshire, this maturing head provided most of the wisdom. And much of the rest of it came from him, the embodiment of cricket's new breed. For this occasion, though, Andrew Hall switches jerseys. It's showtime in the Cup at Lord's. Fit at 40, Jack Russell runs out from the old pavilion for the umpteenth time at Lords in a cup final. Gloucestershire have chosen to field first and fielding well immediately they were, embodied by John D. Rhodes, who's there, of course, for the first time. Look at that, players from New Zealand, Australia and South Africa. Craig Spearman, the New Zealander, could be there for EU reasons. He could be there for reasons of his parentage. And there are lots of them in county cricket. That's overseas players. There are coaches too. John Bracewell on the right, a picture from New Zealand. Tom Moody from Australia on the left of picture. At the Worcestershire side, Andrew Hall from South Africa plays. Matt Mason, Australian-born. Nanty Hayward, the second overseas player from South Africa. Exciting cricketers coming out to open the batting, particularly Vikram Solanke, who so impressed during that 100 at the Oval against the South Africans. He made 50 in the NatWest Series final as well, but he hasn't had a good time of it of late. Thankfully, he was away quickly. A lovely stroke that excited a good crowd at Lords. Anurag Singh is no slouch at the other end either. A lovely wristy player. Worcester off to a flyer. 31 for no wicket from the first seven overs. What I think we've seen so far that the conditions are pretty good for batting. No swing, no seam. Very easy pace pitch. That's a beauty. Lovely timing. Good placement. The footwork. We'll see it wasn't uh, half bad either. Now then, 1965. I heard people through my youth talk about Geoffrey Boyk as being a slow bat. What I heard, 146. Boyk got 317 for four Yorkshire, 60 over matches in those days, not 50 over, but Surrey got the most horrendous beating. It looked as if it might have just curved a little bit. Bit of spin there, took it the wrong way, and he missed it. Fetch that. 54 for no wicket now. That should be four ball that. The drift into the pads, the bowling from the pavilion end, and it's the sort of ball anybody could hit. You could hit it anywhere. Jonty Rhodes through the whole of this replay. Vikram Solanke's chance of a big score is gone. He had 40 to his name. But Rhodes was calmness and presence of mind personified.
Keep your eye on Mark Elaine at mid on. Comes charging in. And it allows Jonty Rhodes just to sort of throw it on the full. So if he hits, he hits. And if he misses, Mark Elaine can uh, whip the bales off. Catch it! Yeah! Hicks gone. He's gone for naught. Driving loosely on the up. He's been caught at extra cover. He got a huge ovation a minute ago. And now the, uh, the big cheers from Gloucestershire supporters. Huge wicket. Really big wicket because a real element of class has been taken out of the game by Ian Harvey and Matt Windows. Very loose shot from Graham Hick. He'll get in the dressing room and he'll kick himself on a big occasion. He's a big match player. And today... He's been a big failure. On the back of that crucial wicket, we'll bring you three components that prove why Gloucestershire are again a well-oiled one-day machine this summer. Fielding, led, of course, by Jonty Rhodes, and the others aren't half bad either. I've never seen anybody cover two or three grounds, uh, two or three yards, I should say, either side of him in the way that Rhodes is able to do. Look at the part Mark Elaine plays, thinking, awareness. He comes in from mid-on to do the damage. Then there's the variety and what on the surface appears to be ordinary bowling. Great skills in slower balls and all sorts delivered by even Harvey and others. And, of course, there's humour. Not much point if you don't enjoy your cricket. And even the coach is enjoying this. What a catch. That's gone very quickly. Martin Ball is the catcher. Once again, Ian Harvey has made the breakthrough, Anurag Singh. The long, painful walk A couple of in-swingers, a slower ball, and now a juicy out-swinger that says to the batsman, I can free my arms. Deliberately out there, and he did just that, Anurag Singh, but he didn't make enough contact. He's kept a slip in place, Mark Elaine, even though we're in the 19th over, and another captain's hunch, backed up by, yep, the freak. Well, now they can really do what they do best, and that's close in. Play the old strangling game. They're so good at it. He is enjoying his work, and look. Well, that is rare. John Bracewell uh, in the 19th over has afforded himself half a smile. They are brilliant, and he's made them into a very good side because they are brilliant at closing in on you. You think you've got away on them, and then uh, all of a sudden they drag it back. Maybe it's, uh, he likes playing on Channel 4 because every time he's been on Channel 4 this summer, he's been an absolute star. Yeah! Let's just have a little listen here. Certainly the reaction of Mark Elaine. There was a noise. Lane going to his right, one-handed. It wasn't hit hard. And although Elaine's body weight is going to the left and he has to adjust, he'd be disappointed he didn't cling on there. <laughs> Trouble here. Gone. It's an absolute disaster for Worcestershire. The fourth wicket has gone down. It was a slower ball. Andrew Hall tried to work it onto the leg side. Ben Smith going for the quick sing when Jack Russell did well. Got to the ball quickly and sent the return to the stumps. Yeah, the key here is the fact that when he's backing up, you know, he probably could have got back, but he slipped. That's what did him. But it was very coolness indeed by the wiki for Jack Russell's ball. He actually threw a perfect ball to the to be run out. Smith gone, 92 for four. Yeah! 
Has it carried? I think it has. Martin Ball is an excellent catcher at first slip. And Worcestershire a five down. Must be close. Gone. Mark Benson's raised the finger. Alex Kidman has struck. Andrew Hall has gone. And Worcestershire in desperate trouble. Jack Hampshire raises the finger. And the bowling change has worked again for Mark Elaine. Gareth Batty has gone and Worcester now have lost their seventh wicket. At least the Yorkshire-born Gareth Batty had shown a bit of Yorkshire grit and gumption with that strike over long off, lovely use of the feet. There was a real problem for the Yorkshire-born Stephen Rhodes, though. He pulled an intercostal muscle. I think that he did it initially when he went for a quick single, diving to make his ground, and then with that stroke through the covers, it all meant that he was immobilised. A runner, his captain Ben Smith, came on, but not for long, because Martin Ball hung on at slip for the third time. As Michael Atherton said, Martin Ball really is... An excellent slip catch-up. Matt Mason was stumped by, yep, you got it, Jack Russell. He had plenty of time there, as he always seems to have, and John T enjoyed it as much as the many Gloucester supporters in the ground. Nanty Hayward was the last to go, proving that whatever goes up must come down. So there you have it. Plenty of batsmen committing Harry Carey, plenty of happiness from Gloucester's coaching staff not enough lines above the five runs per over mark but lots of wickets falling 149 all out Worcestershire in no time oh dear That's away for four. Good shot from Spearman. Wasn't really a bad delivery. Very attacking Yorker length. Well, that wasn't uh, a particularly good delivery from Hayward. Full toss outside off stump, just asking to be belted, and that's precisely what happened to him. It's a no ball, and it's four as well. That's double insult to triple injury. Well, he's got a habit of doing this. Doesn't muck around, and uh, he's making quite a name for himself. The New Zealand coach, John Bracewell, has uh, had a big hand in continuing Spearman's improvement. And the first wicket down. Spearman goes. Kabir Ali has taken the wicket, 30 for one. Spearman caught at mid-off. Well, he didn't go leg side, Spearman. 
He went over long on the ball before. This time he tried to go over the offside and the bat turned in his uh, grip. Not off the middle. An easy catch to Ben Smith, uh, the captain at mid-off. And Spearman's gone for 10. Big disappointment for him on a big day out at Lords. Fetch that, says Philip Weston, former Worcestershire opening batsman, now batting for Gloucester. Got the width he uh, enjoys, no point uh, in running. stick a rule back, couldn't you? I mean, it's, it's right, right in the slot, width, full length, and they've got four in the covers, and it wouldn't matter if they had six or seven, he's given that really the whole lot, hasn't he? Just thrown the bat at it, look. Maybe the bubble's burst. Looks so comfortable, it looked as if he just pouched it and it went straight through. Land. Will it land safely? It's Gloucestershire's day, it seems. And they get two. Well, they must feel very frustrated, the uh, Worcestershire lads. This is a top edge, goes right up, miss hit. You think somebody somewhere is going to get under that. It's up a long time. But no, it falls safe. beaten it off. Superb timing. I think that'll race up the hill and into the fence for four. It does. Lovely shot. Great shot. Calculated mid off is up. Smashed down the ground. Timing again. Well, I was just saying it. I was convinced that to uh, They've made a, a plan to get after the bowling. They're not going to play steady. They're not going to get bogged down. I mean, this is just straight over the top. I'm sure it's a predetermined plan by Gloucestershire to try and win the match quickly and not leave Worcester with any hope whatsoever. I think that's the best ball I've seen of the match. A couple from Ian Harvey that uh, went a little bit uh, away, bounced. This is a really good leg cutter. Used the slope, went down the slope, right to left. But most of the time, the pitch has played so good, you would think it ought to be a high-scoring game. Look, that's how good the pitch is. It's just hit through the line. That's not such a bad length ball, but it's a little bit of width. And he's just smashed it over mid-off. And here's Moore. Straight down the ground. Don't need to run for that. Up and over.
Again, no worth timing for perfection on this occasion, but it will race up the hill. 84 for one. Slaughter. Four again. Gone again. Over the top of extra cover. Four more. Just wide. But four more. And the hundred up. And just the thirteenth over. Not much doubt who'll be lifting that trophy in the middle of a sunlit afternoon. It's all going Gloucestershire's way. Philip Weston, who had started the party, did eventually go. Caught it slipped by Andrew Hall, who'd missed him when the opportunity had arisen earlier. But it was Ian Harvey who continued the merriest of dances. of that display by Ian Harvey. Tom Moody, the coach of Worcestershire, reckons he must keep his glasses on and slip away quietly. Extravagant suffered eventually in the search of further entertainment when Harvey was out. We thought caught, but he was a judge stumped. And the crowd was sorry that he went. He'd taken 20 off one over from Gareth Batty, who got him in the end. Alex Gidman played a couple of nice strokes. Gifted player who's in the minds of the selectors. Lovely straight drive to go with the two wickets he took earlier. The winning runs didn't come where he wanted them to. It was an outside edge. It went through extra cover. They picked up a couple, and the job was done. The Cheltenham and Gloucester Trophy belongs to Gloucestershire. They truly are the champions. They played extremely well. A lovely occasion for John D. Rhodes to come here and play in a cup final and to win it as well. He is an exciting man to have around the place. Look at